Hello and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zimbiro. I am Dr. Abstract and in this bubbling we're going to take a look at updates to Node Package Manager and other developer goodies. Let's go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com and we'll press on Devs right there for the Zim for Developers site. Yay! Here we show how to bring Zim into our development environments with all these components, conveniences, and controls. And you can cycle through these and see different types. Hit tests and other components. Wow, radial menu. And a scrambler. Okay, so uh, that's the idea there. Label on path, so you can have this kind of stuff right in your Svelte, React, Angular, and Vue. Cool, huh? Generally, it works with, uh, you just say a new frame. This is the Zim frame, and you pass it an ID of a div tag. And we've got updates now to Zim, a node package manager. And we provided templates for all of these. So we're just going to take a look through that. But how about just a quick scroll down the rest of the site? And we'll come back to these in a moment. Uh, that's great if you want to use Zim inside of your, your development environment. But many of us use Zim just on its own to make mobile apps, e-learning apps, games. Uh, right there on the browser and when you do that you would start with uh, normally you would just start by copying the template here so we're importing with ES6 modules we're importing Zim when the frame is ready we start uh, we start coding and it's that easy that's just in a browser so there's none of this uh, node and all this other stuff that you guys are quite used to I guess <laughs> but on our side hey this is pretty darn easy <laughs> <laughs> and off we go. So if you're wanting to make a full page Zim, and some of the reasons why you might want your development environment is for possibly your components, but Zim has many components as well, maybe even more than your environment. So here's UI, UX, we've got all sorts of components. That's just the first batch of them. We have accessibility, pull down lists, style on components. Uh, etc. So there's all sorts of components already in Zim. So as a matter of fact, we usually just code in Zim and don't have an, an outside development environment. But uh, it may be that you're used to grabbing data from the database. Uh, oh, by the way, Zim also does that. So let's see, we'll go to the code section here. And then under libraries down here, uh, we can bring in multi-user, so socket. A game, physics, 3JS, our 3D stuff, uh, pizzazz, and then down here is cam and base. So this is Zim base, which helps you bind to PHP and make that a lot easier on the database side. Um, so if you're interested in that, we have that already. There's Node Package Manager, so here's the link to our sort of information on Node. And like I said, we've got some templates for, for these guys. And we're going to go over those. Uh, node is changed here. You can get to it there. Or if we're back on the dev site, then you can get to it here. We're at 15.02, so we finally kind of uh, made it match Zim, which is at Zim015. And then this is the readme from the GitHub. So we've just updated our GitHub. It talks about the type of code that can be put into Zim there. And there's all sorts of examples on this page right here. Getting started is with the ES6 modules. So this part is ES6 modules and we have other, other links in there. Here's the node package manager where we would import Zim from Zim.js for instance or import the specific classes, etc., from Zim. If you don't want the namespace, so just doing that, you would have to use Zim dot in front of everything. So if you uh, don't want the namespace, you can Zimplify right after that, Zim dot Zimplify, and that will remove the namespace. Sometimes if you're working with other frameworks or libraries, you might have conflicts, usually with these two, we've never found conflicts with anything else. But blob is a JavaScript command, and so is window. 
uh, use those less than you imagine. But if you have any image processing libraries that you're using, sometimes they use blob window. I don't know. I uh, haven't really conflicted with window. So uh, here are the Svelte, React, and Angular examples. Now let's see. We can look at them here. This is one place to see them. Okay, so this is a view, and I'm not going to go over each of these for the different frameworks. I don't actually use Vue or Svelte or React or Angular, but we had some excellent help here from John. Um, so that was very nice. We've been working for the last, I don't know, week on this to get these going, and he's provided a uh, repository of Zim templates with all these things actually working that you can grab and, and make happen. Okay, so that's that's here now. So this bubbling is really, hey, here's this stuff. If you use React, come and take a look. I think you'll recognize most of the things here and so forth. Uh, there were some tricks in React that involved this strict mode. And we've had developers over the years asking us about things and having slight issues with things. And one of the things is, is a view will put in, when it uses a strict mode while it's being developed, it will um, refresh the canvas. So you end up running the canvas twice. Well, the solution is keep your div in there, but put the Zim frame call uh, outside of the strict mode. Okay, and that prevents it from uh, duplicate loading. It wouldn't matter once it gets into production, but it's annoying when it's um, when it's loading and can sometimes cause confusion. Okay, so these are the things that Joanne has um, figured out and knows, and that was you know just wonderful because we would have had no idea, and that will help uh, React developers, help Angular developers how to how to do stuff as well. There were some tricks with Angular, but once again. You can go see the GitHub repositories for those templates right here. Or indeed, if we were back, let me get back. If we were back at the developers here, uh, then each of these link into that GitHub repository. So if we wanted to see the React, here it is. And there's all of the stuff that you need, plus instructions. I think the instructions are more like how to use React, TypeScript, and Vite together, and that's probably fine. They, these, he was working in some bundling environment, and uh, then this stuff gets mostly created automatically, but in there you'll see various source for the apps, and hopefully you understand what all this is doing if you're working in, uh, is this one React? Yeah, if you're working in a React environment, and then there's the other ones as well. And then back at the main page here, you have an overall uh, view of the instructions here. So we can see that and then those similar uh, screen grabs of each of the things if you don't want to use TypeScript. So everything in here in the templates, all these guys are using TypeScript dash TS TS TS. Okay. So that is an overview of some changes that hopefully will very much help developers because like I said, over the years, we keep on having some developers come in wanting to use it with their systems. They end up doing it, but we've had kind of like a, a ragtag um, version of it where you had to run a function to install the globals and then often you didn't want to install globals. Well, I mean, that was optional as well but it was a little bit trickier. So now, hopefully, it's just running as expected. Yay, and you'll be able to get all this stuff in your uh, development environment, including, that was a motion controller. Here, check that out. That's an emitter. Uh, here is a pen where we can draw. Whee! Uh, this is parallax. So all these effects are shown. This is animating to noise right there. A layout class, uh, hit the P key. This is the Zim generator, which draws generative art for you. There's a sprite that's animating based on the speed of, or the speed is changing based on my, my cursor here. Over on this side, we've got drag, there we are dragging. So that's something that's very handy for you guys. Hit tests like that. Uh, we have transform tools, so you can put in a picture and, and do transforms on them or whatever it may be. Animation, lots of easy animation. We have cool things like Zim Duo, so you might want to check out that configuration object, com 
style. So here we've styled the components to all be the same. Uh, what is this? Chaining, zim chains. So that's a lot of excitement for chaining. We've got dynamic parameters, which are exciting as well. Those are sort of more developy kind of things, like uh, you might be interested in how dynamic parameters work. We have a repository on GitHub for that. We have a repository on GitHub for Zimduo. Zimduo allows you to pass in parameters in a regular way, in order, or as a configuration object. And that's what um, apparently Python can do that. Uh, but in JavaScript, as far as I know, we're the only ones that do that. We're the only ones that do, do style on the canvas. Here's a bunch of components. Uh, we already looked at uh, these, I suppose. A few of those we got to there. There's a label on a path. Uh, here are various shapes that you can bring in. So these are types of components, blobs and squiggles. These are user editable like that. Wow, you know, that's pretty amazing. Okay, and, and they can be saved with the transform manager. Here's our list. Uh, the list now can be made. Oh, <laughs> we went off to tabs. Hey, okay. The uh, list can now be made continuous. Uh, it's not at the moment, but those are. It's an example of a list scrollable. Oops. Well, scrollable, and we're back to here like that. Okay. So those are just some examples. We have many, many more things that can be put uh, into your development environments as well into your apps. Super. Okay, have a read over what some developers have been saying about Zim. That would be good. And like I said, if you think you're just using full screen Zim or could possibly do that, you can also bring it into just HTML. But often when we're building, <clears throat> we're building in a full screen um, app, like a single page app or whatever, model view controller, etc. You can also bring these types of things in. We, we uh, can export to animate, so we're hooked up with that system. There's lots of extra help for uh, various libraries and stuff like that that are in there. And if you were interested in those code changes, our code info is in the, in the dark pages there. Here's all of our versions. If you're a developer from the 3.js environment, uh, we haven't put anything specific to 3.js here, but we've just introduced texture actives to bring Zim into 3D. So there's our components working in 3D. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, we can change colors and scale and spin it. <clears throat> All right. So there's a bunch of texture active examples. Here it is on a model. We use Zim to animate that. And here's a puzzle on that model. Wow. Isn't that cool? Right. So Zim is very powerful, very handy, very easy to use as well. Uh, come on in and check it out. Um, view us on uh, Discord or Slack. So here we are on, let's see, well, that's GitHub. This is CodePen. Uh, that's Slack, I think, there. Or Patreon for any donations. Medium where we have articles, dev, YouTube, lots of YouTube videos, and then your standard uh, social media there. But uh, do we have a Discord? Is there a Discord on there? Uh, no, we should get Discord. Oh, right, we moved those. We moved uh, Discord and Slack up to the top right here to make way for the other ones. All right, so um, come on in. Join us in Discord or Slack. We'd love to hear from you. And I am Dr. Abstract, and this has been a What's Bubbling at Zim. All the best. Cheers. Have a great day or night.